sorry. Gentlemen, let us take a quiet moment, uh, not a quiet moment, one or two minutes um, to welcome somebody in church this, after, uh, this morning. Welcome, Eric. No, those little rolls, they were misfits. What is that? What is that? The misfits. Those ones that taste like sweet rolls, they were misfits. What is that? That means we don't sell them. Every time we come into the house of the Lord, we recognize that we have fallen short of the glory of God in thoughts, in words, and in deed. Now it is time for us to come before our God. Let us bow our heads and let us 
give everything to our God privately, asking him for remission of our sins. Heavenly Father, we recognize that we have fallen short of your glory in thoughts, in words, and in deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with all of our hearts. We have not loved our neighbors, our, of, our neighbors as ourselves. Therefore, we deserve your present and eternal punishment. But we are heartily sorry for it, O God, Therefore, we come this minute sincerely asking you for forgiveness of your sin. And this we ask in the name of Jesus, your son. Bless us, forgive us, and guide us. Amen. Amen. Upon true confession of your sin, God who is faithful and just is as forgiving us all our sins. He is now calling us his sons and his daughters. He recognizes us and giving us everything that we need, including the righteousness of his son, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us now worship God in truth and in spirit. Good morning, church. Good morning, Good morning Scott. Man. <laughs> so... Uh, this farming thing's turning out to be pretty cool, okay? And I'm, I'm learning about, I'm learning as each day goes by. So yesterday, yesterday, uh, on the uh, Fox Hill Farm, which I might rename to the Wells, Wells Farm, anyway, uh, um, I, was, I wasn't feeling very well, so it was kind of a down day for me. I didn't feel like doing much. So I was, um, I was just outside walking, and I got to a point where I was back out, you know, um, toward what I might call the... The back driveway gate, and I uh, just watching the cows sitting there eat. You know, the cows and the bull, and just watching them. I really was just sitting there. And then one cow um, just walks away and down this little hill. And uh, she started acting really funny. And I was watching her, and she started doing, going around in circles, and she was hunching her back, and then she took a funky looking little stance. And I'm like, oh, this, this cow's sick, you know. Actually, what I thought was, this cow's getting ready to have a baby, you know. And, uh, and so I called Lynn on the phone. I said, Lynn, I think this cow's going to have a baby. And, and uh, you know, not that I would be an experience in this, you know, whatever. But I was, and then so, so she says, okay, I'm coming out. So she, uh, she hobbles out and uh, comes down there. She's watching, and she's, I think you're right, you know. And we're both watching this thing go on. And, man, that was, that was very cool because that, that cow was in the midst of having a calf. And it was over here for a little bit, and it went, walked in the back of the woods a little bit. And finally, you know, it started taking these uh, stances, like a, a squat kind of thing. Not really a squat, but just spreading the legs really far apart. And you could tell she was pushing. And two little hooves popped out. And they popped out. And it, she's having a shift. They pop back in. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then about, you know, 15 minutes later or so, they popped out again. You know, and I say, here it comes, here it comes, and they pop back in. <laughs> and I don't know, I've watched Dr. Pohl, you know, videos and stuff, and he gets out the, the, the chains and the rope and pulls them out. And I was that, that was actually going through my mind, but I'm thinking to myself, remember that time I tried to help that chicken out of the egg? <laughs> that didn't work out too well. So I was watching this and watching it, and finally the, the cow just laid down real, really hard. And it took a few minutes. And it was pushing and pushing. I mean, and that cow, that little calf went whoop, right on out and laid it on the ground. And Mama Cow was licking it and moving it and we was watching it, uh, you know, take its first steps and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that was, I thought that was pretty cool. I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever seen it on TV before. But so um, that, was a, that was a fun day for, for the farm. One and honey. And, and uh, <laughs> I got, uh, we took a lot of videos. Um, I got, like, absolutely no biblical application about that <laughs> to lead us into worship, <laughs> other than it's a cool story, uh, a fun story. And, uh, but, of course, we're here because of a really cool story, aren't we? We're here because Jesus Christ gave his life for us, you know, and, uh, and, and 
conquered death, you know, and for our sakes, conquered sin. And now we, uh, mm -hmm. we've got a cool story that we can mm -hmm. share with people. Um, so uh, let's uh, mm -hmm. all, all join together in worship. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. journey I get lost in my mistakes what looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength my story isn't over my story's just begun failure won't define me cause that's what my father does failure won't define me that's what my father does Ooh, Lay your burdens down Ooh, Here in the Father's house Check your shame at the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, You're in the Father's house Travel's not the end game, the journey's where you are. You never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Failure's never final. And the father's in the room. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the father's house. Check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the father's house. The ghosts come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Prison doors fling wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles take place. The cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Jericho walls are quaking. Strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Lay your burdens down, ooh, here in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore, ooh, you're in the Father's house. Ooh, lay your burdens down. the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore, ooh, you're in the Father's house. Oh, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. I love you, oh Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield. 
and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. And all God's children say, Amen. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on.
God's children say. First reading this morning is from Acts 3, starting at the 11th verse. And he's going to talk about a layman. And this layman got cured in the beginning of the third chapter, and he had been lame since birth. While the layman, who had now been healed, clung to Paul and John, all the people around, excuse me, Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw this, he addressed the people, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murder to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see now, see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given this man perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers, but what God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, that as Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. <laughs> the epistle reading today is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning, and no one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, he, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Let us please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 24, reading verses 36 through 49. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you doubt? Arise, why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? 
they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that a repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Every time we are gathered together, it is right, it is profitable and very good to confess and profess our faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us do so now as we do it at the Lutheran Church of our Savior by reciting the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I've got a question for you. Do you guys go to church? Yes. What is the name of your church? The Church of Our Savior. Thank you. And if somebody were to ask you about your church and what it's all about, what would you say? Loving the Lord, loving our neighbors, and making disciples. Amen. Because if you're not saying that, Amen. We've got a couple of announcements. Um, seasoned citizens, pot belly and paint. That's going to be Friday, April 19th. That's this coming Friday at 5 p.m. over in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, after making self-made subs, sides, and dessert, they will embark in a painting experience. That ought to be interesting. That will bring out our natural artistic talent and have lots of fun. Uh, let's see, this is designed for beginners, and you do not need to be an experienced artist to enjoy this activity. Uh, the meal and supplies uh, you will need for painting will be provided. They're requesting a fee, uh, let's see, a free will donation of $10 per person to offset the cost of the painting supplies. Look for more information to follow next week. Well, that's Wednesday, I guess would be it. Uh, and a sign-up sheet in back in the narthex back there. Uh, let's see, this is an activity for seniors of all ages. So come out for an evening of food, fellowship, and lots of fun. And Pat Lewis, if you want to talk about it, she can. She comes at the early service. She can answer your questions. Ladies' prayer bre uh, breakfast is next Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, please join them for a morning of worship, fellowship, and, of course, a delicious breakfast. Uh, the Bible study, next Saturday at 1.30 uh, p.m. Uh, via Zoom. Or in the Bible room, which is in the back on the left there, and uh, please join. Uh, they're going to continue the study of the proper distinction between law and gospel. Uh, watch for the Zoom link via email. And ladies Bible study. That's going to be also on Saturday, uh, next Saturday on the 20th at 3 p.m. Is something holding you back from living fully and freely in Christ? Are you struggling with fear, rejection, anger, addiction, comfort? 
or something else. Goliath must fall. Winning the battle against your giants by Louis Giglio. How do you pronounce that? Giglio. Giglio. May be the study for you. We will cover the uh, six sessions together, meeting every other Saturday at 3 p.m. It's already started, and it's ending in June 15th. Let's see. Uh, this is an in-person Bible study. To make it easier to follow along, all you need to do is uh, get the study guide, uh, book with the black cover, and uh, you watch a video together, typically 20, 25 minutes long. Then you discuss those videos. Okay, and if you've purchased an Easter lily, you may take it home today. And that's all we have for announcements. So today, I'm going to also do the uh, sermon. Allie, I'm just going to move your stuff over here. And Len, I'm glad to see that you're back because uh, I saw the music when I was putting the slides together. I said, they can't play that without a piano. So, <laughs> so that's wonderful that you're back and that you're healing. So, so let's pray. Father in heaven, may this message be a message that you would have for your people. May the words that I speak be uplifting and not cause harm to the listener. May the proud amongst us be humble and the humble lifted up. May our ears and hearts and spirits be open to receiving this message. And we pray this through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So the topic of this sermon is going to be on the unpardonable sin. Or, as other people call it, the sin against the Holy Spirit. Now, you may have read it in, in the Gospels. Um, you may not know what it means. Today, I'm going to go over that. Now, I would caution you because it sounds kind of damning in the beginning part. But you're here today, and I will tell you at the end, nothing to worry about if you're here. As I mentioned, yeah, you too, Scott. As I mentioned, um, it's in the gospel, and I'm going to show you two uh, readings in Matthew and then Mark where it's mentioned. I guess if I turned it on, it will work. There we go. Okay, in Matthew uh, chapter 12. Therefore, I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people. But the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. And that's the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, Matthew and, and Mark, it says it this way. But whomever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying he has an unclean spirit. Now, I would hope that most of you have at least run across these gospel readings in your Bibles. I know we cover them. We do a three-year series of gospel readings, and it, it's, the three-year goes Matthew, Mark, and Luke. If you didn't know that, that's how it goes. And John is interspersed once in a while, but we're in Mark, we're in and B now. And if you haven't read this, there is an unpardonable sin. And so today we'll talk about that. At first, to describe the sin as unpardonable, it seems a contradiction to what we believe as Christians. After all, the essence for our Christian faith is what? Forgiveness. Christ died on the cross to forgive our sins. And he also rose again to give us everlasting life. In the book of Timothy, it states, God, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So now seeing this scripture 
and then there's this unpardonable sin. How do we deconflict that? To understand what an unpardonable sin is, we need to understand the context of when that was written in each of those Gospels. In the time of Jesus, the Pharisees and the scribes were accusing Jesus of speaking or being empowered by who? Satan. And so, just in the reading that you had from Acts 3, those same Pharisees were hostile toward the apostles. Another point of context is that Jews do believe, in, they did believe and do believe in the Holy Spirit. But they believe the Holy Spirit has two main functions. And those functions are that the Holy Spirit revealed God's truth to humanity. And the second is that the Holy Spirit enabled human beings to, be, to recognize the truth when they saw it or they heard it. Now, both of these are, of course, workings of the Holy Spirit. Now, at the point of Jesus' ministry, here was a situation which in the Son of God... Jesus was himself clearly and visibly casting out demons, overthrowing Satan. He was healing the sick. He walked on water. He cast those demons out. And then we have these Pharisees who knew about this and maybe saw it, calling him the devil. So as, a, as, a Jew, as Jesus demonstrated there, uh, his love in action, the Holy Spirit, while Jesus was speaking, the Holy Spirit was entering, because how do you get the word? By hearing. Jesus was speaking the words, the Holy Spirit went into some people's heart and softened them, and they believed. But then some of those Pharisees and scribes, and that's why in the, in the Gospels you see so many times, who is he chastising? the Pharisees and the scribes, because they were unbelieving. They would not accept that Holy Spirit. So in Matthew 12, all the people that saw all these miracles and these signs, they were all amazed. And they said, can this be the son of David? Meaning, another term for that is the son of God. He, they knew the Messiah was coming from the line of David. So people were coming to faith through Jesus' preaching and his signs and his miracles. But the leaders, on the other hand, they resisted the Holy Spirit. Jesus was speaking, and they resisted that speaking, the Holy Spirit coming to them. When the Pharisees heard the speaking, they said, it is only by Bezabel, Bezabel, which is Satan, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. The Pharisees said that Christ was demonic. But the Pharisees were blaspheming who? The Holy Spirit, because they weren't accepting that message that the Holy Spirit brings, that, that Christ was preaching. The Holy Spirit brings it to their heart. They were rejecting it, and they were blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it was their unbelief that damned them. The only sin that cannot be forgiven is unbelief. Most crucial to the fullest understanding of this sin against the Holy Spirit is in the book of Hebrews. For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, meaning come into faith, 
who have tasted the heavenly gifts and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. Now that's a long saying, but what it says, it's very difficult for once you have faith to fall away from that faith. But if you do, you're basically re-crucifying Christ. Now, I want to go back to this just to, this is an explanation or, or description of what that sin, the unpardonable sin is. It's a sin against the Holy Spirit. It is the consistent and stubborn refusal to believe in Jesus Christ. De deliberately opposing the Holy Spirit as he seeks to bring a person to faith through the gospel message of Christ. Seems kind of bleak, doesn't it? So that scripture that I was showing you describes a horrible possibility or an apostasy. Apostasy just means abandoning or a renunciation of your faith. When we're born, we're born with that problem. But how is it fixed? Right here at this font. You get baptized, you wash clean, you get the Holy Spirit. Faith is delivered to us by means of grace. It's a conduit for us to get the word of God through baptism, through the Lord's Supper, through everyday conversations you might have with people you know about Christ, through our Bible studies, and also through like the, the, um, the children's Bible studies, the, wor the word of God is coming to them. That's how faith is delivered. People come to faith because they hear the word of God. Now understand that Jesus Christ was, surrounds us in his good gifts and spirit, so that in the sun or in the shadow, in the rough or in the smooth, uphill or downhill, from life's beginning to life's eternal, we know his presence in the green valleys and in the valley of the shadow of death. Now I want to point out this part of that Hebrews text that I had put up there, Hebrews 6, verse 5. And people have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come. That's why we come to faith. Because we know of the goodness of that promise of God. We have our sins forgiven. We have eternal life. There's nothing better than that. The opposite of that is eternal damnation. So to come to faith and when we believe in Christ, we're forgiven, we have grace, we have mercy, and the kindness of God is delivered to us through that faith. Now the Holy Spirit's function within the triune God is what? To open our hearts to the word to come to faith. So if you block that, that is that unpardonable sin. Now it seems gloom and doom, but I'm going to tell you something that will have you leaving today with a smile on your face. Now, we should, 
Now, what should we do so we don't fall into that and part of all sin? How do we live our lives so we don't fall into that sin that's not forgivable? In 1 John, I think Pastor will probably be preaching on this one if he, next week or the week after. If anyone sees his brother, and that's a Christian, your brothers and sisters in the faith, and you see them committing sin, not leading to death, meaning that your sins are forgiven, right? If you ask for forgiveness, confess them. So it doesn't lead to death. He or she shall ask, and I put pray there, and God will what? Give him life. That's what's wonderful about believing in Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven if you confess them. But, let's see, to those who commit sins that do not lead to death, and that's what we were talking about, now, there is a sin that leads to death. And I do not say that one should pray for that. So here what John, this is a little confusing, but I'll break it down for you. So what John is saying here, there is a sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. He, John is saying, I don't want you to pray for people in sin that leads to death. You cannot pray that unbelieving people get saved while they remain in their unbelieving condition. But you can pray, and I'm going to bring you back to what did John the Baptist do to the Jews? What did he say to them? Repent. You can pray to those people who are unbelieving and distance themselves out of God's plan, you pray for them to repent of their ways to come to Christ. Let me give you a practical example. And I see that Lynn's here, so the earlier crew wouldn't have known. If you're a paramedic and you get called out on a call, you come into a house, there's a dead body on the floor that's all wrinkly and pruned like a raisin. You look at that body, and that body's been there for three or four days. That person probably died of what? Dehydration, because they didn't drink water. But then you go into the kitchen, you turn the water on, and it's, it's running. Why did that person not drink of that water. That's what this unforgivable sin's like. I choose not to drink of that water, to believe in Jesus Christ, or I blaspheme against the Holy Spirit who gives me that heart that I can believe in Christ. That person who died had the ability to turn the water on and drink and not die, but chose not to. So the encouragement for the Christian would be, take the water that God gives you. Receive it, drink it. Drink of his blood and eat of his body when we have communion. That is a means of grace. That's how God delivers gifts to us. If you don't come to church, you're not getting those means of grace. He washed be washed clean by holy baptism. Receive his word. Receive communion. Now, I want to leave you with some very important thoughts. Pray for those who have walked away from the faith. There was a time in my life where I didn't go to church. I still believed in Jesus Christ. I didn't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. I still believed. But I was a Christian CE. Have you ever heard of that before? Yeah, Christian Christmas and Easter. And so, but I came back to church and, you know, I come every week. And I have been for a while. But pray for people to come back. Pray for those unbelieving who have walked away. Pray that they repent of their sin 
of their belief in Christ. That's what you can pray for. Now, I want you all to remember this, if you take away nothing from this sermon. No one who worries that he or she has committed this sin is guilty of it. If you think about it, you have nothing to worry about because that means you are in the faith. Okay? So don't think you've committed that sin. If you thought about it, you haven't committed it. And that's comforting. For the hallmark of the sin is that one defiantly and without worry rejects any thought of need for repentance or faith. So if you think about it, what is it? Don't worry about it. You're good. Okay? And I also, one last thing I want to leave with you with is, you remember the story, the chosen did it. They, they, the one, they raised the boy who died. He was really sick, and they raised him from the dead. Well, the father, after that, said to Christ, he said this, Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And when you pray, you should do that. Help me to help my unbelief. Help me to know Christ better in my life. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God, you protected your chosen people. And you led them through the wilderness for 40 years. You sustained them and protected them by by day and by night. Holy Spirit, guide us and make us know where we fall short in our lives. Remind us to pray for those who have walked away from the faith and speak the gospel to those who do not know Jesus Christ. We pray All of this in the name, the glorious name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if you want to give uh, tithes and offering, there's a box in the back there. And uh, you can put it there or you can go online. And there's a QR code coming up here. Or I didn't put it on this one. Um, My fault. But uh, you can go online and donate there. And now we'll continue with the prayers. If you could rise, please. Let us pray for the old church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, in your presence we find fullness of joy, and by your right hand, Christ Jesus, you win and deliver peace forevermore. In the midst of this world's sin and sorrows, give us peace in the knowledge of his salvation and confident hope in the resurrection of the dead. Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of his cross, you have made us your children and gather us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance for the forgiveness of sin in Jesus' name among us and all the nations of the world. Give peace, Lord, to our homes and enliven them by Christ's resurrected life. Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives, parents and children. Assure those who live alone that they too are your children, 
upheld by your right hand. Almighty God, preserve our nation and its leaders, especially Joseph, our president, and West, our governor. Preserve order and decency in this fallen world by your hands and restrain the sins and deception of the lawless that we may practice righteousness while awaiting the eternal peace promised in Christ's wounds alone. God of all comfort, you have compassion on those who are afflicted. Remember and have mercy on all those listed here this morning. Those in our hearts and all those in need of your healing and deliverance. This morning we come with Claudette, Kala, Bo, Chad, Valerie, Haley, Patsy, Barbara, Brian, Kelly, Paige, Laura, Heather, Pat, Kathy, Mark, Teresa, Santigi, Jane, Karen, Donna, Sean, Lynn Wells, Wendell, Steve, Melissa, Ruby, and Debbie. Lord Jesus, our Savior and Shepherd of our souls, embrace all for whom we pray with your love and protect them every day. Take every doubt out of their hearts and lead them into your word where you promise to be with them always in every situation of their lives. Calm their nerves, O Lord, and put them at ease. Make them hopeful and patient. O Christ, change their circumstance today. O Christ, be with them now and forever. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by your son's crucifixion, all sins have been blotted out. Send us now the blessed refreshment of his bodily presence in the sacrament of the altar and make us fit partakers in repentance for the forgiveness of our sins every time we partake. We come before you, O God, with the ministries of our Savior. We hand over everything that we do in this place. And we particularly thank you for your on the shepherd in our midst, leading us directly towards you. Bless him and his entire family, O God. And all the children with him right now in Williamsburg. We ask you, oh Father God, to guide and protect them in all that they have done and that which they will do until they get back safely into our midst. We come before you with the circuit outreach and we hand it over into your hands, oh God. Bless our visitor, lead him to lead us so that we become the light of this world. We pray, O oh God, and give you thanks for all that we have asked, that which you have provided, and that which we are still looking for. As for those with special needs, we come with all of them, O oh God. Search their hearts. Take away whatever they have asked amiss. And grant them all your good things. For you promise to be good. 
to all those who love you. We come before you, O oh God, and ask you, in the name of Jesus, we call on you by the precious blood of the Lamb of God that saved the world. To give us that peace that passeth all understanding in the Middle East and the world at large. Stop the fighting, O oh God. Be in their midst and allow them to know you. For you are the peace of the world. Everlasting God, as for those who have walked away from you, we ask you, O oh God, to touch their hearts. Open their hearts so you can enter. Open their ears so they will hear you call their names. Open their eyes so that they will see you. Bring them back, Lord, for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. We come with Lisa, O oh God, who has lost their, a loved one. We ask you in the name of Jesus to remind her, O oh God, of the cross where there is freedom and the empty tomb showing us that we will meet again where we will part no more. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do now. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have for us in store. Let it all be to your glory. Let it all be, O oh, Father God, to your praise. And let us worship you always in truth and in spirit. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy and grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Redeemer and Savior, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please remain standing and receive now the blessings from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done. 
and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. What's that? No, Job. No, Job. Graham? We'll do the verse one time. You want to do the verse? We could do, yeah. Wait, we 